We'll learn how to multiply radicals in this video. These are not radicals, 2 and 5, because there's no root sign over them. Uh, but if you're asked to say, what is 2 times 5? Well, 10. 2 times 5 is 10. What if we did root 3 times root 2? Well, that would make sense that that's root 3 times root 2 is root 6. And um, so if we combine these together, let's say we had some mixed radicals, 2 root 3 times 5 root 2. Well, since this is really 2 times root 3 times 5 times root 2, it doesn't matter the order in which you multiply numbers together. If you go back to that one, 2 times 5 equals 10. Well, 5 times 2 is also 10. So the order in which we multiply doesn't matter. So instead of writing 2 times root 3 times 5 times root 2, what we would want to do is is put the numbers together, 2 times 5, and then put the roots together, root 3 times root 2. And then we would go 2 times 5 is 10, and root 3 times root 2 is root 6. So 2 root 3 times 5 root 2 is 10 root 6. We would multiply the coefficients together, 10, and then we would multiply the radicals, 3 and 2, so square root 6. Now sometimes when you multiply numbers together, like these ones, or radicals, you have 3 root 6 times 5 root 3, so 3 times 5 would be 15 for our coefficients there, and then root 6 times root 3 would be root 18. So it's not always just multiply this, multiply this, and then multiply this, multiply this, and we're done. Because what I've done here is this needs to be simplified now. Um, the square root of 18 is not in lowest terms. And just like you would never leave a final answer as a fraction, 2 fourths, you would want to convert that to 1 half. We never want to leave square roots not in simplest form. So we'll take the 15 root 18 and we will break it down. 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is 2 times 3. So this would be 15 times the square root of 2 times 2 times 3. Oop, I did that wrong. So I was just checking here. I thought, well, let's just double check. So I did 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. That's not 18. And so I see my mistake here now. 9 is not 2 times 3. 9 is 3 times 3. And that's why it's always a good idea to check. So now let's see. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Good. So I've done that correctly. Now I'm going to look for the pair. There it is. There's a pair of 3's. So I can haul that 3 out. 15 times 3 is 45. So my final answer in simplest form would be 45 root 2. So to summarize, to multiply uh, radicals, we would first multiply the coefficients. 3 times 5 is 15. We would multiply the radicals. 6 and 3 is 18. And then we would make sure the final radical is in simplest form. So we had to break the square root of 18 down. And our final answer became 45 root 2. Uh, here's a couple, a couple more examples. So number times number negative 10, root times root, 3 times 8, that's 24. Now this one had a little x in it under the square root, so I have negative 10, root 24x, and 24 is 2 times 12, which is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. So it looks like we'll have a pair of numbers here that we can bring out. So that's minus 20 root and we'd have 2 times 3 left over, which is 6. So we have minus 20 uh, root 6x as our final answer. Now sometimes we could even get questions like, like this. Well, just like you would have, if you had this sort of one, you would go 2 times x, 2x, minus 2 times 3, 6. 
we would do the same thing here. We are going to go this term times this term, and then this term times this term. So 6 times 2 is 12, root 3 times 5 is 15, minus 6 times 3, 18, root 3 times root 30 is square root 90. And now we're going to try to break this down, but root 15 is just 3 times 5, so there's no pairs there. So that's already in simplest form. But 90, root 90 is 10 times 9. 10 is 2 times 5, and 9 is 3 times 3. So we would have a pair of 3's to bring out of the square root. So now we have 18 times 3, which is 54. And we would have 2 times 5 left over under the square root, so root 10. So we'd have 12 root 15 minus 54 root 10. And these, are, these radicals are not the same, so that question is done. We'll look at a couple more examples. So here we have a binomial times a binomial. Well, this is the one where we need to foil, foil this out. So we're going to go this times this, this times this, and then this times this, this times this. So 2 root 3 times 4 root 2 would be 8 root 6, and then 2 root 3 times plus 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then there's no root over here, so we just have the root 3 that we had in our first term. So 2 times 3 was 6, root 3. Then negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, and the only root we have here is root 2. And then negative 1 times positive 3 is negative 3. And then looking at my terms here, none of these radicals can be simplified, and none of them are like terms, so this question is complete. Let's look at this final example. So there's a there's a root 2 here, which is like a 1 root 2. So 1 root 2 times 3 root 2. 1 times 3 is 3. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. Then 1 root 2 times negative 2 root 7. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Root 2 times root 7. Root 14. Now negative 5 root 7 times positive 3 root 2. Negative 5 times 3 negative 15, root 7 times root 2 is root 14, and then finally negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10, root 7 times root 7 is root 49. Now this one's going to have some simplifying. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. We can't simplify root 14's they can't be broken down. They're 2 times 7, nothing the same. The square root of 49, though, is exactly 7, and 7 times 10 is 70. So now let's see if we've got any like terms. 6 plus 70, well, that's 76. And these are our radicals, and they happen to have the exact same square root. So negative 2 root 14s minus 15 is minus 17 root 14s. So there's how we'd multiply um, radicals.